Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to today's math lesson. As we're getting started for today, you will need your math resource binder, your 5A textbook, your 5A workbook, paper, and a pencil. Pause if you need to get these things and then come on back. All right, fifth graders, today we have two objectives. Objective number one is going to be reviewing order of operations and then practicing with that. And then we're also going to be working a little bit with the commutative property, um, which sounds like it might be big and scary, but it's pretty straightforward, I think. Um, and really, commutative property, using the commutative property today, we're going to be really applying our prudence. It's about using prudence when we are solving addition problems and multiplication problems. So the first thing I'm going to want with you guys is to have paper and a pencil because we are going to take some notes to remind ourselves about the order of operations. So go ahead, get yourselves ready to take some notes with me. So remember, we have this acronym that we use in order to do our order of operations. Okay, and we say... PEMDAS. Hopefully this is coming back to you. You're saying, oh yeah, I kind of remember this. So here are the rules for order of operations. This is the order in which we're going to solve. I probably should have started up there with that. Order of operations. This is the order in which we're going to be solving any problems that have multiple steps to it. So first and foremost, remember that we always solve anything that is in parentheses first. Next, any time that there are exponents, we solve that next. Remember exponents, we did those earlier in, the, in our first unit. An exponent would be something like this, right? So that's our exponent. <clears throat> Next, I have it written this way because we do multiplication or division next, okay? So we don't necessarily do multiplication before division. We're just going to go left to right looking at our problems and whatever multiplication or division comes first, we do that and then just keep going left to right solving any multiplication or division problems. And finally, addition or subtraction. And it's the same rule for addition or subtraction. We go left to right, and any addition or subtraction that comes in a left to right order, that's how we're going to solve it, okay? So we put these two on the same level. Multiplication and division are on the same level, and addition and subtraction are on the same level, okay? So fifth graders, you should remember, especially if you had Mrs. Ruday last year, that when we're solving problems with order of operations, we want to underline and rewrite, okay? Underline and rewrite. So I'm gonna do a sample from uh, our workbook or a textbook, but I'm gonna have you guys do it with me for your notes. So 160 divided by parentheses, four, plus two times eight, end parentheses, minus six. So remember, we're gonna solve these by underlining, solving, and rewriting. So we first look at parentheses. So we're looking here for our parentheses, but we have both addition and multiplication inside the parentheses. So what do we do first? We look at our list. Ah, we do multiplication first. So we underline that multiplication problem. Two times eight is 16. Now remember, we recopy the rest of the problem. And you should see it's all falling down below. Okay. Now we have more parentheses. So we underline. Adding 16 plus four is. 20. And now we copy down the rest of the problem. 
We have no more parentheses, so we look what's next. We have no exponents, so we go on to multiplication or division, going left to right. Left to right, we see this comes first. Hopefully you guys are remembering the unit we just finished, and so rather than writing out in long division, we see, ah, they share a zero. We can cross them out. Now we're doing 16 divided by 2, which is 8. And we recopy the rest of the problem. Now we have our addition or subtraction. 8 minus 6 is 2. So fifth graders, you should have a nice set of notes now. And if you need to pause to get caught up, you can do that. But these notes, I want you to put into your math resource binder as a reminder about how to complete order of operations. So pause right now. Go ahead and put this in your math resource binder. Then come on back. Fifth graders, we're going to continue practicing some problems that are order of operations problems. <clears throat> so you're going to work along with me on these problems. I'm kind of going out of order with the textbook, but I am working on pages 30 and 31 in your textbook. So if you want to open up and see where we're at, you can do that, but you can also copy down with me. So we're going to be working on number five in your textbook next. This is an order of operations problem. Got a lot of steps happening here. Okay, so we start with parentheses, which is right here. We have just one parentheses problem. So we underline five plus four is nine. Now we copy the rest of the problem down. We have no more parentheses, so we check exponents. We have no exponents. So now we're on to multiplication and division going left to right. So we don't do this because it's addition, but this is our multiplication. So six times nine is 54. We now copy the rest of the problem down. Do we have any more multiplication or division? Ah, we do. So we underline. This might be something you could do in your head, but maybe not. And if not, that's fine. We can just write it down on the side. Three goes into five once. The remainder of two, bring down a four. Goes into 24 eight times. So we know that this is 18. We copy the rest of the problem down. There's no more multiplication or division, so we start looking left to right for addition or subtraction. So 18 plus 3 is 21. Copy down the rest of the problem. And our final step, 21 minus 7, is 14. We're going to do a couple more pretty speedily. We're going to be looking at page 31 now. 7a. So we copy down the problem, and now parentheses, 8 minus 5, we get 3. Copy down the rest of the problem. What do we do next? Multiplication. 6 times 3 is 18. We copy down the problem. One last step, 9 plus 18 is 27. Let's do 7b together. 5 times 8 plus 6 divided by 6 minus 12 times 2. Interesting. No parentheses in this problem. So we start looking for exponents, of which there are none. So now we're at multiplication and division, which we're going to solve left to right. So we start with our first example of multiplication, and we underline 5 times 8 is 40. We copy the rest of the problem down. We check again for multiplication or division left to right. This comes next. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 
we copy the rest of the problem down. Any other multiplication or division left to right? Ah, yes. 12 times 2 is 24. We copy the problem down. Any more multiplication or division? There is not. So we move on to addition or subtraction left to right. Is there addition? Yes. First one, 40 plus 1 is 41. We copy the rest of the problem down. This is our last step. Maybe you do this in your head, or maybe you work it on the side. Either way is fine. But 11 minus 4 is 7. 3 minus 2 is 1. So our answer is 17. Fifth graders, I would like you to try 7C on your own. So the problem is parentheses 14 minus 5 and parentheses divided by parentheses 9 minus 6 and parentheses. So pause, give it a try, come on back. We start with our parentheses left to right. So 14 minus 5, you should have gotten 9 divided by, you really could have gone right ahead if you wanted to and underline this part, 9 minus 6 is 3. Now 9 minus 3 is 3. Hopefully you got that right. I'm also going to ask you to try 7D on your own. 9 minus 5 divided by 8 minus 3 times 2 plus 6. And then also, I should have said this, 8 minus 3 should be in parentheses. That is an important step. So pause, give it a try, and then come back and see how you did. We start with our parentheses. 8 minus 3 is 5. And then copy down the rest of the problem. There are no more parentheses. There's also no exponents. So we go left to right looking for multiplication or division. The division we say multiplication, division in PEMDAS, but remember they're on the same level. So because the division comes first, left to right, that's what we do first. Five divided by five is one. We copy the rest of the problem down. Next we see some multiplication. One times two is one. Copy the, sorry, one times two is two. Whew, I wrote the right thing but said the wrong thing. I am sorry. Now we copy the rest of the problem down. Now we can do our addition and subtraction left to right. Now again, we say PEMDAS, addition, subtraction, but we're still looking left to right. So we do our subtraction first. 9 minus 2 is 7. Copy the problem. 7 plus 6 is 13. So fifth graders, this is your order of operations review. Okay, and part of your workbook exercise is going to be working with order of operations. If you are wanting to take a quick stretch break, this would be a great opportunity to pause the video, get up and do that, because we're going to switch gears to our second objective, so you could come on back afterwards and after a quick break and jump back in. So our, our second objective says that we're going to be working with the commutative property. A commutative property is a mathematical property that applies to problems that have all addition, or problems that have all multiplication. And this is something that from a very young age, you have learned this property, even if you didn't know it. This property basically says, or means, that if you were to do four plus three, or three plus four, it doesn't matter which order you add it in, you're going to get the same answer. That's what the commutative property means. You can add in any order as long as the problem has all addition and you'll get the same answer. The same is true of the commutative property for multiplication, right? We can multiply in either order and keep the same answer. So four times three is 12 and three times four is 12, okay? So this is what it means with the commutative property. So today's work is going to be a little more complicated than just two numbers. We're going to be looking at a string of numbers. But really what this is about is applying our virtue of prudence, okay? As we're working on using the commutative property, we're trying to think prudently about how we can add in a way that is 
easy, simple for us, okay? So what do I mean by that? We're going to get back into our textbook. And like I said, I've kind of been jumping around in the textbook. But we are going to be on page 30 as we're working through a couple of problems with the commutative, pro commutative properties. So in your workbooks, this is the first problem on page 30. We're seeing this problem that is 7 plus 4 plus 5 plus 3 plus 8 plus 6. It's a lot of adding, a lot of addition. But you can see this entire problem has addition in it, which means that we can use the commutative property to our advantage. Specifically, we can try to add in such a way that we are making tens. So if we look at this seven here, which I've circled in blue, can we make a 10? Yeah, using the three, which I've circled in blue. What about if I look at this four, which I've circled in green, can we make a 10? Yes, with this six. So if we're thinking this through, we know that we have a 10 and a 10, which is 20 plus five plus eight, okay? So now we have a lot less to focus on with our multiplication. So we prudently combined what we could to make tens. So now we have 25 plus eight, which is, 33. Okay, so this is really what we're talking about with being prudent with the commutative property. Combine what we can. What about if we did, we're going to skip to 3a for a second, which is 30 plus 25 plus 20. So again, we're trying to look at this problem and think, can I do anything prudently to combine these in such a way that it makes the addition easier? And I'm noticing these two go together pretty well. 30 plus 20 is 50, and 50 and 25, this makes me think of quarters, like money, quarters, gets me 75. Interesting. What about 3B? A little bit longer, but I think we can make some prudent choices here. What do I notice? Hmm. I think these two go great together. And I think these two go great together. If we add our 75 and 25, I'd still kind of think of quarters like money, but this gives us 100. And then 20 and five makes 25 and then eight, which actually, if you remember, we already did that up here, 25 and eight is 33. So now we're looking at 100 plus 33, which is 133. More prudence for the win. All right, 3C. 45 plus 65 plus 45 plus 35. Hmm. It's a little bit trickier, but I think you can make some interesting combinations here. I like these two together, and I like these two together. I like to think 65, let's take five from here, 65, and move that five over is 70, and then 70 plus 30, that's 100. And then 45 and 45, again, if you take this five and move it over, that becomes 50. 50 plus 40 is 90, so we get 190. All right, 3D, I'm gonna ask you to try it on your own. Can you combine prudently to answer this problem. 35 plus 30 plus 15 plus 70. Pause and then come on back. 
Fifth graders, I'm hoping you noticed that you could prudently combine 30 and 70 and prudently combine 35 and 15. 30 and 70, if you add those together, you get 100. 35 and 15, if you add those together, you get 50. So you can get 150. So fifth graders, this is how we can use the commutative property of addition to prudently solve problems. We're gonna talk a little bit about multiplication as well. So problem two gives us an idea of how we might prudently multiply. So we have 58, sorry, 50, excuse me, times 28 times two. But the commutative property, because we're seeing all multiplication in this problem, tells us that we can multiply in any order that we would like to. And I would like to multiply in this order, okay? Because 50 times two is what? 100. And then 100 times 28, and we just finished a unit when we remember that when we multiply by something like 100, we simply add zeros. So we have 2,800. So as I'm thinking about what I'm looking for for prudent combinations for multiplication, I think it's a smart idea to look for 50 times 2 or 25 times four, because that's 100 and 100, or 20 times five, that's 100. Those are all great combinations of things that you can work with in order to make prudent combinations. And really any time that you can get a number that ends in a zero, that is a beautiful prudent combination. So let's take a look back at number three. We'll go into 3E, which says 20 times 35 times five. If you're looking at my list of prudent combinations, you might have already noticed something that might go nicely together. Do you see this 20 times five? And I see a 20 times five here. Because remember, 20 times five is 100 and we're multiplying by 35, which we should remember now, we just have to add two zeros to the end. Look at that, so speedy. I actually think F should be just as speedy. 86 times 25 times four. So we're looking here at our prudent combinations. I see this one right here. What a great combo. We know that 25 times 4 is 100 times 86. Remember, we're adding two zeros. So we get 8,600. All right, I'm going to have you try one that is not in your textbook, but give it a go. What if we did 32 times 50 times 2? Again, we're looking for those nice prudent combinations. So hopefully you're seeing that as a beautifully prudent combination. Now we do 32 times 100, which asks us to add two zeros, 3,200. Why don't you try another one? And again, we're looking for prudent combinations. Go ahead and pause. Try this one, come back and see how you did. Hopefully fifth graders, you observe this prudent combination. Four times 25 is 100. We multiply by 18, which is adding two zeros. So we get 1,800. All right, I wanna quickly go over 3G and 3H. Those are slightly different because our combinations are not quite as obvious, but remember what I said, that it's always a good idea to try to end up with some zeros at the end. So looking at this two and 15, two times 15 is 30. And now we're dealing with a multiplication problem that should be able to be done pretty much in our heads, right? Three times three is 
nine, and we have to add one, two zeros, 900. And I hope you guys are seeing that as we're doing all of these, we're not needing to do a bunch of vertical multiplication problems. We're really just working on building our mental math skills and seeing a way to prudently combine in order to save us from all that extra effort, okay? Okay, we're actually gonna skip H because this one just gets a little bit trickier and I don't wanna complicate things. So fifth graders, for today, we have done two things. We have reviewed our order of operations and we have worked on prudently grouping multiplication and addition problems to be able to do things really more quickly and in our heads without having to do a lot of vertical algorithms. For today, you do not have a practice, no practice. Instead, what you have is your homework pages, which are pages 22 and 23. When we come looking at your work, some of this is going to be working on order of operations. Some of this is going to be working on prudently combining. Remember that this commutative property only works if everything in the problem is addition or everything in the problem is multiplication. It's not going to work if you start having a combination of operations. And if it's that, then we really just need to be working on order of operations, okay? So I wanna see not necessarily a whole lot of writing vertical algorithms. If you have to, that's fine, but really we're working on trying to prudently combine, okay? Good luck, fifth graders. Only homework today, no practice. I'm looking forward to seeing your pictures.